Hello, today I will show you a method to measure the capacitance of supercapacitors. Normal electrolytic capacitors, such as these ones, have capacitance in the order of microfarads, that is, one millionth of a farad. This, for example, which is a large one, is of 10,000 microfarads. By contrast, this smaller supercapacitor is of 10 farads. So you will need to put in parallel 1,000 of these to have the capacitance of this one. And this other is of 100 farads and this of 500 farads. Most multimeters can measure capacitance, but their range goes typically to a maximum of 2000 microfarads. So it will be impossible to use your multimeter to measure the capacitance of a supercapacitor. We need a little bit of mathematics. Remember that current equals capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with, re with respect to time. But if the current is constant, we can write this formula as capacitance times voltage interval divided by time interval. Okay, so we can write this as capacitance equals current times time interval divided by voltage interval. Okay, suppose now that we use a current of one amp and a voltage interval of one volt. For example, we can charge the capacitor from one volt to two volts. So the interval is one volt. So the formula becomes capacitance equals one times delta time divided by delta V, which is one volt. So capacitance equals time interval. What is the meaning of this? Okay. If we charge of supercapacitor from a voltage of 1 volt to 2 volts with a constant current of 1 amp, then the capacitance will be equal to the time in which we charge the capacitor. Let's see a practical example. I will test the 100 farad capacitor. If your capacitor is new or it has not been used for some time, you need to charge and discharge the capacitor a couple times before making the test. The cap is connected to the power supply, which is set at a constant current of one amp, and is also connected to the multimeter to check the voltage. And we will measure the time with the timer. So I'm going to start the power supply and the voltage in the cup is starting to raise. We will wait until the voltage reaches one volt and then I will start the timer. And the timer has to be stopped when we reach two volts in the capacitor. So the timer is running and we will stop it when we reach a voltage of 2 volts. Remember that the capacitance will be equal to the time interval when we charge the capacitor from 1 to 2 volts. So we get a time of 1 minute and 56 seconds. 
Our time was of 1 minute and 56 seconds or 96 seconds. So that means that the capacitance is of 96 farads. However, this method overestimates the capacitance of the supercapacitor. Why is that? Because capacitors have an internal resistance that consumes a part of the current used to charge it. This overestimation is on the order of 25% of the value that we get. So, of these 96 farads, approximately 24 is lost in the internal resistance. 25% of 96. So, the real capacitance must be closer to 96 minus 24 equals 72 farads. Okay, now what happens if we are testing a very large supercapacitor, for example, a 3000 farad supercapacitor? We will need a lot of time to do that. However, remember that our formula says that capacitance equals current times time interval over or divided by the voltage interval. If we still use a voltage interval of one volt, but we use a larger current to charge the supercapacitor, for example, we set current equal to two amps, then capacitance will be two times delta T. For example, if we get a time interval of 200 seconds, then the capacitance will be double that quantity or 400 farads. And of course, we can use a larger current to reduce the charging time. 